Hey guys. Welcome to the stylized asset suite for object lights, auto painterly effects, texture painting, gradients, grunges, ambient occlusion, support for both painterly and anime styles, cross etch lighting, nodeless normals painting, curvature, the ability to bake your shader to a single texture in a few clicks, and so, so much more. Using this add-on saves me so much time while making my projects, and now I'm releasing a totally free version of the add-on, Stylized Asset Suite Lite. You'll seriously regret not trying it out, so download it in the description, and let me show you the magic of this add-on in this video. But before we get started, if you need flashy editing to stay focused or be convinced that this is something that's really powerful, then this video isn't for you. I made this add-on for people who actually want to make good art and are serious about it. Let's start off with just a monkey and a sunlight. Click new to make Make a new shader. Want some light? Just add a stylized light dynamic effect. We'll do anime style later. For now, just switch the blend style to linear so that the shading is more regular. You can play around with the light slider slash controller or the sharpen light features just as you want. Want to change the light? Just go down to the highlight settings drop down menu and adjust the light value or the colorize as well, and you can tint it to whatever type of color you want. If it affects the shadow too much, you might have to play around in the light slider slash controller to fix that. Want to change the shadow? Just go down to the shadow tab and just like with the highlights, you can do whatever you want to adjust it. Want to make the shading painterly? You have two options options. 1. Normals painting. 2. Automatic effect. Both of them I'm giving you for free. Let's talk about the automatic way first. In the light effect, just go down to the painterly effect tab and slide it to full. It's so easy to adjust it. You literally just play around with the parameters here that I've made for you guys and yeah. Do keep in mind though guys, this auto painterly effect works best on soft surface models. Like for example, this hard surface type of model here won't work as well with it. You'll have to use the normals painting method more, but you can see if it was like soft surface and I like subdivided this, then you can see now it works pretty well. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Now for the fun part, texture painting. Add a texture paint slash draw all colors effect. Open it up and you can create a new image texture just like this. Name it whatever the heck you want. 1024 by 1024 is good, but use whatever you want. And for the texture paint slash draw all colors effect in specific, make sure you always set alpha to zero. It's so easy. Just go into texture paint mode, select a brush, pick a color. Make sure you have the texture you just created selected up here. If you don't see it, you might have to hit tab twice. And after that, just start painting. It's so easy. You can use whatever brush you want. And if you want to erase, just switch it from mix to erase alpha, and then you can draw to erase instead. You might notice that our strokes aren't being affected by the lighting properly. Just like in drawing softwares, you can change the order of the layers very easily, just like this. And now, since our strokes come before the lighting, they'll be affected properly. Just like in drawing softwares, you can slide the visibility of each layer just like this. And yeah, you can have an infinite amount of colors with this effect, which is pretty cool. Want to draw more stuff, but on a different layer? Super easy. Just add yet another texture paint effect and literally repeat the exact process that we did before. And you can have a whole different layer that you can draw your strokes on. And once you're done, as before, you can slide the visibility of this layer if you want to enable it or disable it or have it at whatever opacity you want. Once again, I moved it before the light effect here so that our object will be lit after the strokes. Want to add another light for just this object? We can add a stylized light per object effect. You'll notice we get a light object that appears and what you can do is basically drag this around and it'll just spawn lighting on your model pretty much. Once again, we're doing painterly so let's switch this to linear. And just like before with the regular stylized light effect, you can adjust the highlight settings, shadow settings, literally whatever you want. There's even a painterly effect for this one but do keep in mind it's geometry based so you might have to subdivide your model more for it to work and look good. These drawings are a bit distracting, so I'll disable them for now. And let's warm that lighting up a bit, why not? You can add as many of these as you want, so it's really up to you. By the way, if you have another object using a different material, you can add a per object light to that one as well, delete it immediately, and then in the settings of a light object effect, just select the one that you're using on the other object to be for this one as well. And now we have this working for both objects, even though they have a different shader. This is just one of the most awesome ways to add a rim light to your object. Want to add ambient occlusion to your model? I got you guys covered. Just add an ambient occlusion effect and it's really intuitive. Just open it up and you can play around with the ramp slider to try and get a fall off that you like and play around with the strength as well, harshness. Everything is here for you guys to play around with. But we need some more variety in our model. So let's add a stylized grunge. Just go over and add a stylized grunge effect. It's very intuitive. You just adjust the bright areas and dark areas. You have contrast here, positioning, style, literally everything. To show you guys even clearer what this does, let me add a UV sphere here and I'm just going to add some lighting to it. And then I'll add the grunge effect after that. I think here more clearly you can see what the style of this grunge actually does. You can see it basically gives a more painterly type of look to the model. You can even adjust the style down here if you want it to be more stepped and harsh in terms of the texture, but it's up to you. But wait, what if we want to add harsher detail onto the model? Za has got you covered. Just add a dynamic texture simple effect, and you can see we once again get an empty. By the way, if you don't see your empty, just shift right click on your model and then shift S selection the cursor and it'll spawn there. I like to set steps to one and then just clamp it a lot. You can play around with the roughness and detail. There's so many settings here that I made for you guys to play around with. Just get it nice and like grungy looking. I'm gonna switch the 
blend mode to multiply so that it darkens based on whatever color we choose. And you can just really easily and then choose a darker color so it multiplies by that. So yeah, pretty cool to be honest. I'll dim it for now and we're gonna make it harsher later when we do something else that's really interesting. But what if I wanted to draw scratches onto the model that I can dynamically darken or brighten? No problem, just add a hue saturation value effect. And you can go down to the masking settings over here, create a new mask. And you don't have to set alpha to zero because this isn't texture paint slash draw all colors, so don't worry about that. And what you want to do is slide the enable mask feature. And you'll notice if I darken on the hue saturation value effect, we can go and then use this mask if we select it here. And by the way, guys, when you're texturing with anything that isn't the texture paint slash draw all colors effect, use black and white as your colors because that's how masks work. So if you draw regularly, it'll draw white. If you hold control while you draw, it'll draw black. So I'm just going to draw regularly here. You can see basically what it does is it removes the hue saturation value effect wherever we draw. Now what we can do instead is invert the mask so now where we draw is going to be dark instead and you can dynamically adjust it. Once again hold control while you draw if you want to undo the effect in any area. So what we can now do with this knowledge is draw in areas that we want to be dark and these can basically be scratches wherever we want them and we can dynamically change how bright or dark they are very easily by just sliding the value setting and the hue saturation value effect. But wait these scratches and harsh detail don't look too realistic they need to catch some light. No problem just add yet another hue saturation value effect and this time we want to increase the value and what we're going to do is making a mask once again and once that's done with you want to enable the mask and invert it like we did before and just like that you can draw light on the edges of these scratches or harsh detail places and pretty much it's going to look so realistic after this once again you can dynamically change how bright it is with a hue saturation value effect anyways from there you can alternate between your dark hue saturation value effect texture and your bright one and just basically add scratches or whatever type of detail you want so easily but remember the dynamic texture we added before you can also use this hue saturation value effect to draw in brights on the edges of those as well so you'll see me doing that here and this is just going to upgrade the quality even more of your model but i bet this atom can add gradients and stuff like that right no you're wrong it can i added the spherical gradient version here first which is only in the pro version but you guys will have access to the rectangular gradients for free so i'm going to show you how to do that soon but for now you can just see me playing around with the spherical one which i usually like to use there's not much for me to even say you can adjust the blend mode and color you can distort the gradient to make it more painterly it's all up to you if you want to have a very like neon pop type of color maybe you can set blend mode to screen and use a very high value on the color so yeah it's cool all right now for rectangular gradients which i'm giving you guys for free it's going to be the exact same thing except the only difference is instead of being like an ellipse it's like a rectangle so if you move the gradient around you'll see it's kind of just like a whole type of rectangle that's coming onto the model if that makes sense just like this and the settings are going to be exactly the same as before one cool thing you can do with this is basically use it to kind of multiply the model so that the bottom is darker than the top and you can create like a nice type of anime style gradient if that's what you want. So you'll see me just playing around with it here. And yeah, that's pretty cool. But wait, there's no way this add-in can add transparency and stuff like that too. Wrong, it totally can. Just go to the menu and add a simple transparency effect, and you'll see the model turns completely invisible at first. What you can do is play around with the transparency amount slider, and it might be all messed up, and that's because you have to turn off show back face, and now you should be able to easily slide the transparency of your model. If you want a more interesting look, you can switch the blend style from blended to dithered, but it's up to you. If you want to draw in where the transparency is going to be, just go to the mask tab. And like we've done before with other masks in this video, you just create one with whatever resolution you want, you enable it, and then if you go to text texture paint mode you can draw with black and white on this texture and if you try drawing you might notice nothing happens immediately that's because you have to slide the transparency amount slider a bit for it to show up and now what you can do is basically just draw in wherever you want your model to be transparent just like that just to prove to you this actually works you can see if i put a cube in the background you can now see it through the model and let me just restart this process a bit so you can see it's just so amazing you can draw in transparency wherever you want just like that Let's take a quick detour right now and talk about curvature, because I actually just added this new effect. You can see here I have these two objects, no lighting even. If we go down to the curvature effect, we can add it and you'll see what we get is basically something that says resolution. And what we can do is set a resolution, 2048 is fine. Detail levels, this is something you might have to increase if the curvature doesn't come out looking good. But pretty much just click calculate curvature and you can see we've calculated the curvature on this model. You can play around with the brightness, the darkness, saturation, hue, spreading, sharpness, all of this. In the pro version, there's also a painterly distort section that you can enable and pretty much just play around with this to try and get it to look even better. If you don't have the pro version though, what you can do is just add a stylized grunge after, which it's not going to be as accurate, but it will still give your model more of that painterly type of look. All right guys, now for this object, let's click the add curvature effect as well, make sure it's unwrapped as usual, and make sure that hard surface is checked for an object like this that's just very cubic, so I'll calculate it. And you can see right there, we already have a great looking curvature. If you go into the texture paint mode, actually, you can see we have a curvature mask generated. One thing that's really cool that you can do with that is go to the pastel brush that I gave you guys and once again set your colors to white and black 
always when you're using this add-on besides for the texture paint slash draw all colors effect and you can go in and just draw and erase you can see brightening the curvature also brightens the strokes now which is just awesome you can go in with your painterly smudge brush as well and just go and basically nudge this all together and honestly it's just amazing you can still adjust the brightness the spreading so i mean this is just insane and i hope you guys take advantage of it there's not even any lighting in this scene right now, and you can just imagine if you add all these other effects, like how amazing it'll look. Now this next effect can be a bit laggy, but it can be fun to play around with sometimes. It's called charcoal slash watercolor. You just add it, and then if you go into the settings, you can open up a texture. For those of you who have the pro version, you can use the textures given in the stylized textures pack that comes with the add-on. And from there, what I like to do is just increase the overall blend and then decrease the overall strength which will kind of give the model these painterly looking edges just a bit. If you're going to use this effect, I recommend disabling it until you render because it can lag your scene a bit. But yeah, I mean, this is just pretty awesome to be honest. You can have these painterly edges so easily, but I'll just disable that for now. By the way guys, just me from the future, if you ever want to make your painterly effect on your model even stronger, what you can actually do is with the painterly effect enabled, so make sure you have it enabled already. What we want to do is go to the bake normals tab. We'll call it uh, whatever you want, I guess monkey normals too, and then just start final bake. And after that, when you bake the normals with the painterly effect enabled, what you can do is then just disable this here and then go to normal maps, type in the name of whatever you called your normal map that you just baked, and then enable it here in the normal map section. And you can see now it's the same as we had before, except now we have this normal map strength feature. So you can adjust how much you want the strength of the normal map to be. So you can see I had it set to two here. I think like 1.57 is good. Something like that might be cool. If I take my light and put it on the side here, you can see it looks pretty interesting. So yeah, that's just another really cool thing you can do. By the way guys, you might be wondering about outlines, it's actually very easy, I accidentally forgot to tell you about this. Let's say I didn't have this one here, all you have to do to add an outline to your model is go to this object outline effect here. It's available for free for you guys as well in the light version. Just click add outline and you'll see you can increase it like this. For you guys it'll probably be just like all black. You have this outline texturing feature here too where you can select a texture of like whatever and basically that texture will dictate the coloration of the outline so i like to oftentimes just set this to be completely black like this but it's up to you and yeah anyways guys that's it for the painterly free stuff the next couple effects i'll go over are for only the pro version so if you don't have that you can skip to the anime style timestamp and from there we can continue all right my pros so let me talk to you guys about another cool effect that you guys have in the pro version it's the specular reflection effect and this is basically how you can take your painterly model and make it to be more reflective we'll switch it to linear because we're doing painterly step linear is meant for anime stuff and you just play around with the roughness and the shine brightness as well you can even tint it to a color if that's what you want to do play around with the color strength so it's pretty intuitive you can enable the painterly effect on the specular reflection as well and this is just absolutely awesome you can play around with the roughness then and you can see we have these automatic painterly strokes on our model and you can of course colorize this to whatever color you want so it can just be really fun to play with next thing bounce lighting calculation so this is honestly one of my favorite parts of the add-on if we have a plan at the bottom here or like any objects in the scene pretty much. Assuming your model is UV unrocked, you can just go down to the bounce lighting tab and create a name for your bounce lighting image texture. Set the resolution. The painterly effect is experimental on it, so it might not work that well. So it's up to you whether you want to test it or not. But then you just calculate and then enable the strength. And if you guys don't see your bounce lighting, what you have to do is play around a lot with the sharpness and spreading values. You might have to increase the sharpness by a lot and then also increase the spreading by a little bit afterwards. So that's just my advice to you in case you don't see your bounce lighting working properly. But yeah, honestly, this add-on is just like so dynamic and I use it in every project at this point. But what about a procedural brush strokes effect? No problem. Just head over to the dynamic brush strokes effect so you can add it and you have to decrease the value min and value max and you'll see you'll get these brush strokes on your model you can play around with the settings a lot and this is just some like really cool effect that you can use to give even extra detail to your model so i just like to use it sometimes i feel like my pinchly effect on my regular light isn't strong enough so what i'm going to do actually is just go to the bake normals tab and i'll bake the normals of this model and then let's disable the pinchly effect go to the normal maps tab and switch it to the normals that we just baked and now it's basically the same as what we had before except now we have the strength slider so you can actually increase the strength or decrease it if you want so yeah let's move on to anime stuff now by the way guys one thing you should know is if you have two objects that are using the same material like these two are here as you can see they're using the same material you can click this make material such effects single user copy button to basically separate it as a new material and then this one will be different now all right anyways let's move on to the anime style now all right guys now for the anime style let's start off again by making a new material you can set it to whatever base color you want let's add a light effect this time we won't switch it you can play around with the steps to be whatever you want as usual highlight value if you want only two shades which is what i do a lot of the time you can just set step count to one and then play around with the light slider slash controller until you get a look that you like that's usually what i'll do but for now we can use more steps just so it looks cooler here as usual you can colorize the shadow and highlights just like this with the anime styles there's also the rim light feature 
which you can enable and then play around with set to whatever you want. And you can see already, this just looks pretty cool. Of course, you can still add a per object light just like this. And this time what we want to do is set steps to one. And you can see just like this as before, colored tune shaded lights. This is something that is very hard to do in Blender, but I've created a way for you guys to do it. So take advantage of this add-on. Play around with it and make some awesome stuff. All right, so just like before in the Pinterly one, you can add ambient occlusion as well and just play around with it as much as you want. Just be careful with it because it might make your model look less anime style if you use it too much. And of course, gradients as well, you got those here. So you can see me adding a gradient and I want it to basically just go from top to bottom and sort of multiply so the monkey becomes more red and darker on the bottom just a bit. Of course, you can also add a stylized grunge, which is something I like to do a lot with my anime style model. And we'll use a dynamic texture as well to give more harsh detail to this model. Just play around with it. And of course, I like to set my steps to one, just like we did with the painterly monkey. I'm doing the exact same thing here and nothing different. So you guys can go back to that part of the video if you don't understand this. But honestly, it's just very intuitive. Next, I'll add a hue saturation value effect so we can draw some brights on those edges. Once again, same exact process we did in the previous painterly monkey, making it bright here. And I'm just going to be able to texture paint on the parts that I want. So yeah, I hope you guys can see how powerful this add-on is at this point. It's actually existed for almost a year now but no one's just known about it so i'm just making this video in hopes that more people can learn about it you can also add an object outline to your model in this style too set it to whatever color or texture you want just like before and of course as usual you got the specular reflection effect that you can add if you have the pro version and just play around with that a bit you can use the distort settings here and play around with the strength and scaling on it this will look a bit better for anime styles now lastly let's add some bounce lighting by going to our stylized light dynamic effect and adding a plane make a texture name and let's just calculate it set the strength up play around with the spreading and the sharpness and yeah just like that we get bounce lighting on our model and of course this is optional but dynamic brush strokes too you could try playing around with here and i didn't really talk to you guys about this but there's actually this metallic effect that you have for free in the stylized light dynamic effect as well so you can try playing around with that all right guys now let's talk about the normals painting feature for those of you interested in that if your model's unwrapped just go down to the bake normals tab and give the texture a name and resolution anything above 512 should work 2048 was way overkill here and click the bake normals button then just click the paint normals button and you can automatically just paint your normals however you want now you can see this takes a lot of time to be honest i know a lot of you guys watching this are probably like really love to paint normals but i don't really like it personally i just made this feature for those of you who do like it but anyways you can use the pastel brush or i like to use painterly smudge a lot of the time you can use some of the free brushes i give you guys or make your own it's up to you but yeah after you're done painting normals just click the stop painting button and you'll notice nothing's changed yet. That's because we have to go to our stylized light dynamic effect and in the normals tab, just search for the normal map that you titled it and then enable it. And you can see now the strokes in certain areas. Obviously I didn't, I didn't do it like everywhere on the model because that would take too long, but you could see in the areas that I distorted by painting, it becomes painterly in those areas now. And you can adjust the strength as well of the strokes wherever you drew them. So yeah. Also guys, there's a normal settings for the specular reflection effect as well. So if you have the pro version, you can put your normal map here too. Okay guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the add-on. And if you're someone trying to learn Blender and maybe make high quality stylized art, check out my masterclass on ukiobros.io. This is a comprehensive program where you can learn at your own pace and basically seal all my secrets that I've learned over many years. Anyways, thank you so much for watching.